Hi everyone, welcome back to this series uh, looking at kits that I've either finished building or, or where I've designed the, the kit myself. Um, this one is for another 4mm to the foot scale 9mm gauge kit. This time we're looking at Canopus, which is an 062 saddle tank steam locomotive. Uh, originally the prototype was built for the Pentaman Railway in Cornwall. Uh, this kit's from Backwards Miniatures. Uh, unfortunately the kit's no longer available. Um, there are suggestions that the, the original kit work, artwork and stuff has been sold to somebody else, so they may reappear in, in the future. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a nice-looking um, steam locomotive. Um, I'm just going to take the cab roof off because it's loose so I don't drop it. Um, and it was actually the, it's the first kind of all-etched construction kit that I built. Um, I actually bought and started building this in um, July of 2014, so before I started work on designing the Hudson Hunslet diesel locomotive. Um, but because it took so long to finish, you know, about six years in the end, um, that's why it's appearing at this this point in the sequence of the uh, of the videos. Um, there were there were a number of issues along the way uh, that meant it spent quite a bit of time in a box while I summoned up the enthusiasm to come back to it. Um, but yeah, so as I say, it's a, it's a kit from Backwards Miniatures. Um, they have a reputation for finely detailed uh, kits that are kind of prototypically accurate. Um, but they also have a reputation for being a bit of a, a challenge to build in some cases. Uh, and that was certainly the the, the case here. Um, not uh, not you know, not long after I'd, I'd, I'd mentioned to a few people that I was going to build this kit, um, they were all pointing out that it that there were there were substantial issues with the kit as it was. Um, and that definitely turned out to be true. Um, so there were silly little things. Some of them were self-inflicted. Some of them were problems with the kit. I this rear um, coal bunker part is actually a replacement. I managed to burn a hole through the original while trying to anneal it. Um, that's just me and lack of uh, lack of knowledge and lack of skills. I won't be doing that again. Um, but the first problem I had with the kit itself was the fact that this saddle tank is a, a white metal casting. And it then sits on top of a brass tube for the boiler, which in turn is filled with another white metal casting to give it some weight. Um, and all three of those were different lengths, uh, and you couldn't put them together and get it to fit between the smoke box and the, the cab. Um, so I had to trim them to, to length. Fortunately, they were when trimmed all to the same length, they were still long enough to just about fill the, fill the gap. Uh, but it was one of those slight annoyances that shouldn't really happen. Certainly, I can understand... The brass tube not being quite the right size, it'll have just been cut off a, a longer tube, but the castings should all kind of match up, and they and they didn't. But that was that was obviously fairly easy to to rectify. Uh, nothing particularly complicated. Um, the bigger problems were around actually putting together the the motion. So there were a couple of problems here. One, this connecting rod that goes from the rear axle up to the crosshead on the slide bars, um, in the kit is too short. When the wheel gets rotated to the point where it's pulling all the way back um, the connecting rod's so short that, that it pulls the crosshead and slams it into this upright at the back of the slide bars uh, and everything locks up um, so I actually drew up some replacement etched parts so these coupling rods aren't from the kit they're the ones I designed which are just that fraction longer uh, I mean it will travel uh, the, the, the crosshead will travel um, up and down the slide bars without banging at either end um, and then that wasn't the only problem with the slide bars. Um, they're actually they're they're kind of one piece. So they're they're the slide bars. Then this upright, which then has a, a piece that passes all the way across the chassis, um, and forms then the other upright and the other slide bars. Um, but when you look at it from below, the original piece had the slide bars too close to the wheels, uh, which meant that all this other motion behind the slide bars couldn't pass through the gap there just isn't enough room no matter how much you thin um, all the nuts and washers there just isn't enough room for it to pass through so you might just be able to be able to see in this gap here where there's the where there's the cross member in the middle that's the the top of the slide bar bracket um, and I've actually cut it in half moved the two parts apart slightly and then soldered uh, another piece on um, to join them back together um, and that moves the, the slide bars out ever so slightly enough for some space um, behind. Um, so that was, a, that was a, a bit of a pain but worked. Um, I also replaced the cylinders. So on the original kit, these were white metal castings. I, they didn't have a hole down the middle for the, 
for the pin to slide up and down uh, and try as I might I could not manage to drill that out sensibly uh, I broke a couple of drill bits I couldn't get them center I couldn't get them straight um, no matter what I did so in the end I used my lathe to turn a replacement set so these are these are brass um, cylinders I turned on the lathe with then some um, detail added to the to the end to match um, and then the the pony truck that carries the wheel, rear wheel this is also not from the kit um, because the one in the kit is for a different gauge um, it's ever so slightly wider um, so it basically tells you to cut it apart cut it into bits and then reassemble it um, so I actually made a, sep a simpler one up so this is a piece of brass with you can just about see underneath then a tube um, soldered to the brass which then has the axle through it um, there's also slight issues with the way this this works in the fact that um, these wheels one of one set is live to the chassis so you only need pickups on one side um, but um, because the pony wheel is free to swing it can touch the chassis with either side of the axle um, and cause a short so I had to uh, there's some tape essentially added under the paint uh, behind behind there to stop that shorting out um, so yeah all in all um, a bit of a challenge which as I say is why it took kind of um, six years from beginning to end uh, I think the last two were were, were were a lot of it were was the painting um, but I'd got to the point where I was so kind of demoralized by the whole thing uh, that it was stuck away in a box and I just focused on other on other models uh, which is why it took so long but I'm really happy with how it turned out in the end I mean it's a it's an as I say it's a nicely detailed kit um, the actual the actual look of the model is, is gorgeous um, and is, is really good in comparison with the prototype there's lots of all the all the details for all the all the uh, pipe work um, all the springing uh, for the wheels everything's really really nice um, it's just a shame that there are issues with actually building the the working motion part of the kit um, and it's not like as I say it, it's not like it was just me that was failing to do it properly um, there were so many people that told me you know this kit doesn't build up as described um, which is which is a real shame um, so hopefully if they do reappear uh, they will have had some some work uh, some work to them but yeah hopefully um, you'll have you've enjoyed seeing a another steam locomotive um, in among all the, the diesels and, and things we've looked at recently <laughs>